Welcome to LinkedIn Collective Studio at B2 Believe New York. I'm Lexi Tierney, VP of Customer Success, Growth, and Partnerships at QuickFrame. And today we're here to talk about something I'm personally very passionate about, which is creativity in B2B. And in particular, a lot of the opportunity for storytelling through CTV. Um, and I'm here with my good friends, Trevor and Stuart. Really happy to have you both. Happy to be here. Delighted to be here. Really <laughs> pleased to be here. Um, so before we go into questions, just to kind of set the stage a little bit, what we're, what we're talking about today, uh, obviously CTV has been a really growing uh, channel and opportunity and uh, a lot of wonderful results already from that. Um, I think we're starting to see it become more of a mainstay for marketers in their toolkit. Um, in particular, because I think it's somewhere north of 90% of households in the U.S. are now reachable via CTV. Um, so huge audience and, and a really great opportunity to connect with different users there. Um, and that, of course, gets me excited. C CTV is a, a big part of my background. Um, I work for Quick Frame, which is part of Mountain. We all love CTV um, and are a, a partner of LinkedIn as we develop content for that channel specifically. Trevor, I'd love to get your thoughts in particular of where you see the opportunity with CTV for B2B marketers. Lexi, thanks. Um, it's, it, we're very pleased to be here today, by the way, because we're launching, of course, our partnership with LinkedIn, so thrilling. Um, we, obviously, are massive believers in television. TV, I think, I think we all know, is the most powerful advertising medium in the world. But even so, I think marketers sometimes underlook the scale of it. You know, at NBCU, we have 273 million people every month engaging with our content. And we spend literally billions, over $26 billion a year, developing content. Whether that be covering sports, whether that's reality shows, whether that's dramas, um, whether that's breaking news, whether that's financial news. The amount of content that we put out is massive. And TV needs that content. So great TV needs great content, and it needs, it needs great advertising as well. Um, and we're, I think, really interested in the opportunity that you have, given the scale of audience that we enjoy, to link that with the, with the, with the LinkedIn data. Um, scale's really important to marketers, of course. It's an important in two ways. For some marketers, the traditional TV advertisers have wanted all of that scale to reach their products. But what makes scale, I think, so interesting for the B2B clients is with that scale comes the ability to reach very precise audiences. And you can't really have one without the other. So whatever business um, our clients are in, we can be pretty sure that we're reaching all of their customers on, on a monthly, possibly a weekly, or even a, or even a daily basis. Um, beyond that, of course, is about accuracy. So you look at the, as I said, the scale of what we have, um, the power of the advertising medium, but then the important thing is, are you really reaching that audience with the accuracy and, and minimal wastage? And given the partnership that we have together, we're thrilled about the opportunity that that brings and therefore for the storytelling. That's wonderful. Well, so on the topic of storytelling and scale, a slightly different side of scale, um, we're talking not only about the scale of the audience, but the, the scale of the placement, right? So for that big screen storytelling opportunity, um, I think it is, a lot different than maybe than what a lot of B2B advertisers in particular are used to. What are some things to consider when it comes to that sort of storytelling at that scale from just a, a placement and video standpoint? I think the first thing to consider is that you've got, I think, for all of our B2B clients, a much more diverse set of business decision makers to target than you had perhaps 10 or 20 years ago. If you look at, for example, the, the number of uh, female leaders within the, la exec within the largest enterprise companies, that's grown massively. I think we're at close to 50%, thank goodness. You look at the, the diversity of businesses being founded, you look at the number of millennials in key BDM decision, uh, decisions um, across medium-sized companies, they're very large. So the first thing is you've, you've, got, you've got that audience. The second thing I think for marketers to understand is that you can use TV now, given the targeting capabilities of CTV, across the funnel. It can build, it can build brand, but it can also be an incredibly powerful way of driving ROI. And Stuart, you'll talk a little bit about attribution later. As, as attribution becomes more and more accurate and, and therefore more useful, you can, play, you can use television to play in different ways. But when it comes to sort of creativity, I think literally, the options are almost endless. You know, we've seen, we see B2B clients taking large 
sometimes expensive brand campaigns and using TV for those, but we also see some of the other clients being much more tactical in that use. And I think one of the things we'd encourage everyone to think about is that there is no one size fits all. You can use TV for, for everything that you would hitherto have used disp display for, with the great advantage um, that, it's, that it's, again, targetable and, and measurable. And one of the things we're really committed to at NBCU is going beyond the traditional video unit. We're very happy, of course, to make 30s, 60s, 15, six second units available. But within our CTV environment, we spent a lot of time and effort developing different opportunities. For example, pause ads, which allow somebody to see a screen as they pause their viewing and see that screen for the number of seconds while they're pausing. Incredibly effective. We have interactive ads, which allow QR codes to take, to take, to allow clients to take action. Um, we have Spotlight ads, which is the first ad that anybody sees. We have a whole bunch of innovations here, which again, I think, add to the marketer's toolkit. Sure, absolutely. Stuart, anything you'd add? Yeah, I would, I would say, first off, excited to be here. Also excited uh, for our partnership with LinkedIn to be announced. Uh, we're already big partners with NBC Universal, um, and I think this complements that quite nicely. You know, to your question about, you know, the, the nature of LinkedIn's rollout of their CTV offering. I think primarily it's exciting for a few reasons. One, I think it's democratizing premium video access for small to medium-sized advertisers in a way that has not been possible before. Video is seen as a very expensive way to advertise, and I think it's probably intimidating to small to medium-sized brands. And then with B2B specifically, I think there's a lot of stigma around measurement for B2B and it being a hard, hard to measure. So I think with the iSpot LinkedIn partnership, I think it, it adds a level of precision. It, it's big it brings big data to the party. Um, and, it, and it reflects something that iSpot's been doing for the better part of five years across what is today more than 200 brand customers, uh, as well as on the sell side. Um, so we're super excited about the partnership and think that uh, it's going to be very impactful to the marketplace. That's great. I, I think you're right. Um, so before we, we go into the attribution piece, because I do think that's critical, I do want to just kind of add to your point, for a lot of B2B marketers and marketers in general, they're not used to creating something for this format. And sometimes I find, even on the quick frame side, we're reminding that at the end of the day, the person consuming this content, they're just a person. Right? They're, they're people, even your head of procurement, they still like just watching fun shows on TV, kicking back with their family. So what's gonna resonate on the human level and tell that story that's relatable? It doesn't have to be, like you said, a one size fits all. It's really just understanding your audience and the people and what makes it tick. So I, I think- um, Well also the outcome you're going for, right? Absolutely. If, if you look at a big, a big brand that's B2B in the Fortune 1000, you know, they're likely going to be less tactical than a small to medium sized B2B brand that's literally trying to move inventory out of a warehouse right. because the, the, the hosting costs are too high if they don't, right? Like, right. So I think the KPI will vary dramatically by advertiser. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, great point. Well, and, and nice segue then into, into that side of things. So to your point, I think a lot of people think of TV in the traditional sense, where it's a little more spray and pray. <laughs> that's, the, that's the phrase, right? And, and with CTV, you do have that advanced attribution, a lot more measurement yep. wherever you're at in the funnel, and, and you can tailor your strategy and your message to that. From a, a measurement standpoint, Stuart, you're, you're an expert here, so yeah, I'd love more of your take on how marketers should be really looking at the success of this channel and how, how do you support in that at, at iSpot as well? Yeah, I think this would be like the opposite of spray and pray <laughs> in the sense that we're talking about the application of LinkedIn's first party professional audiences to CTV inventory that is available for purchase for B2B advertisers. A lot of that through NBC Universal's assets and owned and operated properties. Um, and that means that you are precisely targeting those who you want to reach. And most likely the deal that you're negotiating, you know, an advertiser negotiating a deal with LinkedIn for a campaign where they're only paying for those specific people in target that they reached, right? And, and our measurement is there to, to validate that and to verify that X number of, in, of CMOs on the East Coast or of decision makers in the Midwest or take your pick of the awesome segments that you can pick from, from LinkedIn's first party professional audiences, that those people are the ones that were actually reached. So the notion of like waste 
or excess, right, becomes less of a concern. And the notion of spray and pray, I think, becomes less of a concern. That's great. Couldn't agree more. It's, it's not spray and pray. It's really targeted measure, we think, which is incredibly important. And we, and we love the democratization point because we agree. It's been part of our mission at NBC to do that for all advertisers. And I think one of the interesting things is if you look back a few years, traditional TV was dominated by a couple of thousand advertisers. Fast forward now, we're, we're in the golden age of TV from a consumer's point of view, but we're also in the golden age of TV from, a, from an advertiser's point of view because their ability to find that audience and again to measure it and to really work on ROI and optimize is incredibly important. And it was interesting at 124 at your yeah. annual innovation showcase, there was an interesting stat that was set on stage, I think it was by Ryan McConville, where he said that 40% of the, of the advertisers that you guys brought in in Peacock in the last year were like new advertisers. Exactly right. Yeah, we're, we're, we are seeing them flow in it, because it works. Yep. CTV, TV's always been the most powerful advertising medium. To your point, it's been challenging, I think, for some B2B clients because the, the entry costs could be high. Targeting was, until now, somewhat difficult from a B2B perspective. All that, all that changes. Sure. Um, and again, I think the, the range of formats available is hugely important. Not everybody has necessarily a story they want to tell in 60 seconds. Not everybody should, but when you can use a variety of lengths and formats, I think it becomes a really, really important addition yeah. to the market as well. Great, great point. Um, I'd love to, to hear if you had to sum up quickly your advice for a B2B marketer coming into this, maybe it's their first time dipping their toe into CTV. What's your main piece of advice? I think think about environment differently. A lot of marketers, when they think about the advertising environment, they think about, a, they think about programming first. And that can be important. Listen, we have some of the most amazing programming. We've got the Olympics coming up. We've got sport. We've got, we've, you know, we, we have the best content. But we would argue that actually audience trumps that. The strategic audiences are more important. But do think about the advertising environment. Think about those um, providers who, like us, are dedicated to low ad loads and, and very intelligent frequency control. We have to make sure that we're balancing, uh, and we think it's a win-win for both, our advertisers' requirements and our viewers' requirements. And we do that by, by keeping a low ad load of less than five minutes an hour on Peacock. That makes advertising more effective, more innovative, um, and we think, is, again, it's a win-win for everybody. I would say, I mean, obviously I'm a little biased because I'm coming from the measurement side, but I think it's rare that advertisers you know, the Fortune 1000 is very used to in-depth measurement, post-campaign reporting, in-flight optimization, all these kinds of things. Smaller to medium-sized brands that are dipping their toe into premium video, CTV, they're not used to that stuff, right? So I think that they should embrace this newfound level of transparency that they're probably not used to and say to themselves, all right, I'm doing something I haven't done before, but guess what? I have all this empirical evidence that I can look at that tells me whether it worked or not. And I think that's something they should look forward to and embrace. Yeah, love that, great. Um, and a final note, actually, anything, I think sometimes, again, part of the wariness maybe for, for B2B marketers is there's all these questions from both a targeting and measurement standpoint around um, privacy and, and security and data share. Any kind of key notes you have from yeah. a compliance standpoint? Totally. Um, so the way that we are proactively dealing with that is that a large portion of the identity matching that is done, that is associated with this measurement, will be done in a privacy compliant clean room environment. Uh, specifically, we're using Habu um, in order to do that identity matching. So uh, we're doing everything in full privacy compliance. Great. So no need to worry. Love to hear that. I'm sure everyone else loves to hear that. <laughs> and, too. and we'd agree, privacy compliance is incredibly important. I think you're, you're judged in this world by the company you keep, and that's why we only partner with great other brands too. That's right, love it. Well, wonderful. Well, Trevor Stewart, thank you both so much for, for being here today. Really great discussion. Um, and I think I can speak for all of us in saying that we're very excited to see uh, where CTV continues to grow from here and the opportunity it presents for, for B2B advertisers. So thank you for being with us today and uh, bye for now.